these NFL evaluators almost lied to Terrace Marshall because they told him if he if he came out early, he cut his season short. He opted out in this crazy 2020 college season, the COVID year. They told Terrace Marshall, you're going to go in first or second round. He thought, great, I've done all I needed to do. I'm done playing. And then he falls down the board. We're thinking it, it's the 227. Carolina Panthers are on the board. If they don't take him here, Terrace Marshall's probably going to the third round. But luckily, thankfully, Terrace Marshall goes back of the second round to the Carolina Panthers. I could be more excited, but before I start talking for the next 10 minutes, Alex, tell me a little <laughs> bit more about this Marshall pick. Yeah, I'll get my my quick 30 seconds in here before you go on a Terrace Marshall rant. Um, but yeah, I was surprised to see him free fall in this draft. We expected early round two, if not late round one for Terrace. I don't know why he was the 10th wide receiver off the board. I've heard some like weird rumors about a knee issue, but I'm not gonna buy into all that. I'm gonna take this at face value and the talent that we know Terrace Marshall is um, coming out of LSU. You're well-documented, loving Terrace Marshall. We've broken him down time and time again on our channel. But as, as far as the landing spot goes, you know that's the new information we have here. I actually like it in Carolina. He should slide right in as their third wide receiver. They don't really have a tight end of consequence. I know they signed Dan Arnold, but I'm not too concerned about him. Sam Darnold is now their quarterback. I think that's a lateral move at worst from Teddy Bridgewater last season. So you look at this situation, and I know wide receiver three doesn't always get people excited, but in Carolina, they had three PPR top 25 wide receivers last season, and that was with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. You had DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel vacates 97 targets in this offense. Robbie Anderson could be gone after this season. His contract is about to expire. So for Terrace Marshall, we could see him slide into a role here where he might get 70, 80 targets as a rookie, make some plays, show some flashes, get us excited. And then heading into 2022, if Robbie Anderson leaves, he could be the wide receiver two on this team, which is going to be incredibly valuable for Dynasty and for redraft leagues in 2022 and beyond. So Mike Davis vacates another 90 targets to the Curtis Samuel 97. But you have to know we will see Christian McCaffrey back this season. I don't know how many of those you know slot targets that Curtis Samuel was getting um, or those targets Mike Davis was getting out of the backfield are going to be siphoned off to Christian McCaffrey this season. But I do think there's a role for Terrace Marshall from day one in Carolina, which is all you can ask for for these rookies. So we'll see how things go in his rookie season in 2021. I wouldn't be surprised to see him get off to a little bit of a slower start and kind of ramp up as the season goes on. And he's actually one of those guys that I think is a great buy low candidate. If we're getting into week four, five, six, and Terrace Marshall hasn't really flashed yet, I'm fine to submit a low ball offer for him, see if I can pick him up and watch the breakout happen in the second half of his rookie year. It reminds me almost to a T, pun intended, of T Higgins landing spot coming into the 2020 season where we knew the team was going to pass a ton. The Panthers passed for over 600 attempts in 2020 with Teddy Bridgewater. I expect them to be close to that again because that defense, while they did draft a lot of guys, it's still a pretty raw defense, a lot of young talent. I don't expect that to just come into play and then light the league on fire right away. And the fact that Joe Brady, even though he did fall into the late second round, Joe Brady was willing to say, look, I've I've used Terrace Marshall before when I was the OC at LSU. I've seen him play. I've seen him practice. I know how he prepares. The injury wasn't a concern to Joe Brady, so the injury concern was not that big of a deal to me. And Marshall is a guy that can be used all over the field. He played the slot without Justin Jefferson, one of the best NFL rookie wide receivers that we've ever seen. When Jefferson was there, he played on the outside and put Jefferson into the slot when he was a 19-year-old sophomore. He's also just cut from the same cloth of Justin Jefferson physically. Both are just over six foot, 205 pounds. Both run four four forties. And production-wise, on a per-game basis, both averaged 100 yards and seven receptions a game in their junior year in college. And Marshall was able to do that without Joe Burrow, without the best offense of all time, without 60 touchdowns to go around. Marshall was on pace this season for 89 receptions, 1,357 yards, and 18 touchdowns. This guy's a touchdown machine in the SEC against the top competition at the college level. Marshall is the next best thing you can get to Justin Jefferson right now as a prospect. And landing in Carolina, it's a great situation. 
I don't see the competition as that steep for Terrace Marshall. There's 155 vacated targets in this offense. Curtis Samuel's gone. We have 28-year-old Robbie Anderson, who's never really been the epitome of good health in a contract year. We have dynasty darling DJ Moore, still age 24. Carolina did exercise their fifth-year option on him, but we did see him get out-targeted by Robbie Anderson. Now, Moore was, was much more efficient than Robbie, but why is DJ Moore not the target magnet we all want him to be for fantasy? Why is he getting relegated to the field stretcher role behind Robbie Anderson, an undrafted guy, super skinny speedster? So I think Marshall, uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sound too down on DJ Moore. I'm just starting to, to plant that seed of doubt in my mind. If we're talking range of outcomes, is it possible that DJ Moore is just not going to be used as a Michael Thomas light like we all wanted him to be going into last year? I'm just saying. And Marshall can play the slot. They can let DJ Moore maintain his role. They could even put Marshall on the outside and just have both Moore and Marshall stretching the field. Even with Robbie Anderson there, I think this team is going to repeat that monster pass attempt volume and their offensive production. A healthy Christian McCaffrey probably caps the passing game ceiling a little bit, but this team has that super raw defense. They play against the Bucks, Falcons, and Saints twice a year. Expect Ooh. there to be opportunity for Marshall. I don't even mind this landing spot for year one. I think Terrace year one could be very similar to T. Higgins. And then year two, moving into a full snap share from week one, He's going to be a beast, no doubt. And Alex, Terrace Marshall is officially a my guy. He is a flag plant for this rookie class in 2021.